Okay. Um, I just wanted to talk about something I just discovered recently is that um, muscle is 75% water and that's because it's mainly glycogen and fat has less water in it than bone. Fat's like 10% water and bone is around 20% water. And so, um, I, uh, the reason I discovered this is because, um, I've been researching, um, muscle training and as a way to convert fat into muscle. Um, and from a uh, Qigong perspective, I su suddenly they they talked about the way they test for muscle is they have some some test called the inner inner body scan. I think it's called inner body scan. And basically, it's just a voltage reader that shows you have a higher um, conductance of electricity in a uh, muscle because it's 75% water. So it will conduct um, electricity faster than fat. Maybe I have that turned around, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <laughs> anyway, um, just from my own experience, and I have very limited muscle training experience, but what is kind of unusual in my experience is that I, I came into, I, I basically, I bought a bench press um, this is like 10 years ago and I bought a, a used bench press and then I sold it back used to the same place that I bought it from. But um, the reason I bought it is because I had extra electrochemical energy and by electrochemical energy I mean emotional energy and the extra energy was um, anger energy but it was not my own an anger it was somebody else's anger and because of my qigong training I realized that this was a valuable resource of energy that I could harness and leverage and so um, when, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about the pump, um, what that is actually, in my view, is he's, they, it's, he says it's better than sex or better than a male, male, um, ejaculation. And so why, why would that be true? Because the pump is a <clears throat> is a female orgasm it's a vagus nerve orgasm so what you're doing is you're having having a extreme sympathetic nervous system um build up of energy and this happens when your muscles start shaking so you can like your leg muscles are a lot stronger than your arm muscles normally. So then if you stand with your knees bent, then your thigh muscles will start shaking and they'll shake like seven to nine times per second. You'll notice this, um, is this rate of vibration is actually in resonance with the Schumann resonance of earth. And so Dr. Brad Keeney, um, he was a professor here in Minnesota, but he studied shamanism worldwide and he calls this shaking 
medicine because he says how the like if you they did a study on shamanic uh, drumming around the world in various different cultures and they found it's pretty much all with the seven to nine drum beats per second and so that creates this synchron synchronous resonance with the Schumann resonance of earth and the Schumann resonance is the source of what's called yin chi or negative ions the yin chi is the is also also the normal emotional energy of anger of the liver as yin chi and so what happens is is that that in meditation you you take that yin chi with when you close your eyes normally the yin chi goes out of your eyes with your eyes open so when you meditate you're turning it back into the liver and then it's the yin chi through meditation goes back down back to join back into the the yang chi or yang chi yang chi um and so the yang chi is actually a positive ion that's in parallel with the parasympathetic nervous system the vagus nerve which is the in the lower body that's the right side vagus nerve that's attached to the reproductive organs so this is what causes this the pump in muscle training so you get this extreme uh, sympathetic nervous system reaction first from the muscles shaking under the stress but then that causes parasympathetic rebound and the parasympathetic rebound is then the opposite extreme as a deep relaxation that's also orgasmic bliss through the activation of the right side vagus nerve and so that's how the um yang yang chi is then built up in the body um as an increase in positive ion so then what's fascinating is that the the yang chi actually originates from a biophoton signal which is a shen or spirit signal but in science it's known as a biophoton signal so this is called the yang shen because what happens is the yin chi when it goes out of the eyes with the eyes open then establishes what would normally be considered the what we consider to be like real reality external reality but in fact it's based on um light because all matter is made of light and so then as humans we see in a beautiful form what we consider to be a beautiful form reproductively beautiful and this so this causes a biophoton signal in our brain that then triggers the sympathetic um, nervous system as lust and so that immediately as a biophoton signal it causes an electromagnetic reversal of the yang chi um, back into the yin chi and so then the only way to reverse that biophoton signal which is a higher frequency of and that that signal if you do nothing about it that will cause um loss of physical loss of the what the, what's called the yin jing the yin jing would be the physical substance that would be lost during the sleep even if you don't have a dream like even if you don't have a dream about lust in your deep dreamless sleep you'll have you'll still have this loss of the physical substance so then um this is why like qigong masters are so rare because it requires that level of um mind mind control to reverse the biophoton spirit signal that triggers the 
sympathetic nervous system that then reverses the parasympathetic nervous system of stored up yang, yang chi, yang chi energy. And so that stored up yang chi energy also is stored up as muscle, as increased muscle. And so the the muscle, the the water, the fact that muscle is 75% water is very fascinating because what happens is that when you do the um, extreme sympathetic nervous system with the legs shaking from the muscles being tired and vi and shaking and causing this burn. Um, and you do this through med sitting meditation also because the breathing, the pranayama breathing exercises activates the um, diaphragm and the diaphragm is the second largest muscle in the body. And the, the first, the biggest muscle, the number one biggest muscle are the glutes, which is the backside. So it's kind of interesting because those aren't the typical muscles that are trained in muscle training. So in yoga, you're actually training the, the second largest muscle. And then when you do horse stance, horse stance naturally trains the glutes. And then so the horse stance will naturally convert the uh, sympathetic nerve system into this um, parasympathetic stored up energy. Um, so that's the basic muscle training that the Qigong masters do is the horse stance. And then the full lotus. Um, and so the full lotus yoga position. And so that also, the full lotus when you're, that will stretch the tendons. And then basically the, the number one protein in the body is the collagen. So like when you study Muscle training, another thing they're talking about is with this new trend in um, variable resistance training, where they use resistance bands. Um, what happens is that you are focusing just on the extreme, um, the extreme edge of the, of the, um, muscle training. So it's a physical, it has to do with the physical stretching of the muscle. So when you physically stretch the muscle the most, then you can get seven times more power out of that muscle when it's stretched the most. So it's not just the muscle, but it's also the tendons have to be stretched um, before you can really train the muscles. And so this has to do with the um, receptors for the hormones also, because they talk about like testosterone levels and what the bodybuilders explain, the muscle trainers is that even if you're injected with testosterone, your, you, your body will not um, use the testosterone unless the tendons are stretched because you have to be able to activate the proper receptors for the testosterone. And then, and you do that through the tendon stretching. So then when you stretch the tendons along with the muscle in this resistance training, what that means is that you're no longer having to lift the same amount of weight through the full, um, movement of the tendon and muscle, but then because it's variable resistance, so you're using a resistance band that you're stretching. So when you have it fully stretched, then suddenly you're now lifting the equivalent of like 600 pounds, potentially. Um, but then as soon as you stop the stretch, it goes back down. So then you're, that's like this, the base, the, that's like the core, the essence core of muscle training, how you actually build up muscle mass as hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is what they, how they pronounce it. Um, 
So to bring it back to the Qigong training with the emotional energy, um, the so with the pump, the what Arnold Schwarzenegger calls the pump, that's the secret of the pump um, as a like orgasmic bliss. It's actually a female orgasm and how, that's how you build up muscle ironically. And then, and so then since muscle is mainly glycogen, so it's literally stored up energy that you can then, you know, burn off. Um, of course, if you, if you fast, then your muscle will, your body will, um, also convert fat into glycogen um, through the ketogen, uh, ketogen, what's it called? Ketosis, ketosis. So um, normally that's how I burn burn fat. In fact, that's what they recommend to to burn fat is through is through diet. That's how you're you're gonna because it because then you're just talking about calories. You're 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 defining the the fat based on calories and so and and how many calories you take in and how many calories you're removing so if you're if you're trying to exercise to burn calories you're actually not going to burn that many calories through exercise and the only way to really burn calories is through fasting but calories are not the same as energy and so if you're trying to build up energy how you do it is by converting the fat into muscle because the muscle is actually stored up energy um, because of the water and the electrical potential of the water that then activates the glycogen so what's so special about water well they've discovered this fourth phase of water and it's it's either found when glacial ice is melted into water naturally and so it's this the fourth phase of water is actually has to do with what is called the a macro quantum molecule so it's basically the zero point energy of water because what's fascinating about water is that when it has a phase change into ice um even though it gets colder, it actually in, it actually decreases in entropy because it expands in volume and it becomes more um, like a crystal. So it's actually storing information. So it's negative entropy. Um, even though normally entropy would be when the when the heat is cooling down and so it becomes more um it's it contracts and so you lose you're dissipating the heat so you're losing the the information and then increasing the entropy so what makes water the fourth phase of water is that you are able to um split the protons and electrons of the water molecule um, and you you can do that internally in in vivo um, by having a, a thermophilic or um, a um, protein this is this is going a lot longer than I expected I'm just kind of I'm just kind of rambling about whatever comes in my head, obviously. But the, the, when you have a, they call it, um, what's the term for it? It's something philic, but it's basically like it bonds, bonds to protein. It likes proteins. And so this is what happens with collagen. So instead of, instead of using, um, temperature as found externally, when you have the water melting from frozen glaciers, um, the fourth phase of water is found based on pressure. So when you are building up muscle, you're putting the water under extreme pressure. And so that causes the 
the collagen. The collagen is piezoelectric in the body. So the bones also have collagen in, in the bones. And this is what I didn't know. I didn't know this um, until I studied the muscle training. And so the collagen is mainly, it's made up of microtubules. And so then the, what happens is the microtubules have a quantum coherence with the tubulins as a negative refractive index. And so when you have that negative refractive index, you have this quantum negative entropy that's also non-local and it's faster than the speed of light. So it's actually precognitive information from the future. And so they call this super radiance. And there's a guy in Japan who's been studying this in a research lab. His name's Aniriban Bandiopahe. And I've corresponded with him also. He's a he's a PhD researcher who he leads a research lab of scientists. And so they study the um, neurons relying on these microtubules with tubulin having super radiance. And the the strongest electrical conductance of the microtubules is from ultrasound, the frequency of ultrasound. So it turns out that um, we're not supposed to be able to hear ultrasound, but they've discovered in tinnitus research that the, the highest sound we can listen to externally as pitch when we're listening externally, then turns into ultrasound internally in our brains, and then it resonates the whole brain at ultrasound. And when that happens, then you have this quantum coherence. And so that then it, when you have the quantum coherence, it creates it resonates with the virtual um, signals from the future. And then that those virtual signals create photons as virtual photons. And so then the virtual photons through the tubulin with the microtubules are then converted into photons. And that becomes what our consciousness is as perception and it's, they've documented that to be at the terahertz frequency, which is the blue light, the blue light. And it's through the serotonin, um, actually the tryptophan um, molecules that are inside the tubulin. And so when you have the tryptophan, this is why psychedelics actually increase the frequency of consciousness in the brain, because they increase this terahertz resonance, because the Psychedelics are a type of trip, tryptophan molecule. And so the reason the tryptophan molecules work is because they have this um, benzene-like structure to them, which is basically the quantum resonance that's superconducting at room temperature with this negative entropy. And so the benzene is like a ring. It's what they call an aromatic ring. So it's an aromatic ring quantum resonance. So you have these double bonds and then single bonds in a ring that go back in on themselves. And this enables a photon to go in and then to then emit an electron. And then the signal will go back and then be able to absorb another photon and it circulates like that and it does it as quantum coherence so it's a non-local energy conductance with a zero um, loss of energy so it's a they've studied this in photosynthesis so this is how chlorophyll chlorophyll is a similar it works just like an aromatic ring resonance um, as benzene. This is the claim of Andrew A. Cochran, his master's thesis from 1965. 
but it's also what Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose have claimed for quantum consciousness about the tryptophan molecules in the brain and how that works with the um, microtubules in the tubulin. So then the, the chlorophyll is very similar to hemoglobin. So, in, so according to Andrew A. Cochran, with the hemoglobin, you're getting the same kind of uh, superluminal conductance of energy as a, um, like a room temperature superconducting energy because of this quantum negative entropy. Um, and so they also call this pi resonance. And the reason it's pi resonance is because it's based on the one half spin of the electron. So you basically have this extra electron in these aromatic ring type st molecule structures that circle around, but it's more like a spiral because it's the one half spin means the pi resonance means it's actually non-local. So it's a 720 degree rotation at every zero point in space time. And so you're, you're having that fifth dimensional resonance that's super luminal um, in these macro quantum molecules. So it turns out that's what water also is. Water is a macro quantum molecule and that's shown that the fact that it turns into, it expands in volume when it freezes is, is a demonstration of this macro quantum negative entropy acting at the macro scale. So, um, so then when the, when the water inside our body is under pressure with the collagen, as is, as is, is the case with bone and muscle building, then, um, and the tendons, then what happens is you're also creating these virtual photons. And so the, what happens is the, you get a virtual photon energy that then converts back into a photon emission from the water. And this has been studied by um, Gerald Pollock in um, the state of Washington. He's a professor in the state of Washington. So he calls it this, he calls this easy water, but it's, it was also studied by Emilio del Guidici, who was a um, quantum physicist in Italy, and he worked with the quantum biologist, Dr. Mai Wan Ho in the UK. And so they studied how the, the secret, um, Dr. Mai Wan Ho argued that the secret of Yang Yang Chi or Yang Chi in the body is due to the protons that are delocalized based on this non-local energy. So the Wan Chi or the cosmic original Chi is from these virtual photons as based on the delocalized protons as the Yang Chi. Um, so what you're doing is you're converting the Yin Chi in the blood from this hemoglobin that has this superluminal aromatic resonance ring structure to it, just like chlorophyll. And then you're converting the yin chi into increased yang chi in this cerebral spinal fluid that then is like a, um, um, relies on this virtual photon signal um, through the phonon, uh, what they call zero sound. So it's like a, basically like a virtual phonon or what it's also called the super radiance. Um, so, so that's why the listening, listening is what guides the chi in the body because when you listen, the source of the listening as a logical process like the left ear, for males, the left ear is yang chi, while the left eye is yin chi. So you have this yin yang um, complementary opposites between the eyes and the ears in the body, and that has to do with the vagus nerve.
So then to bring it back to the muscles, the muscle training, the what ends what ends up happening is you are splitting the water and so you're emitting a um, virtual photon signal that then converts into a biophoton signal and then that will convert the stored up um, yang chi as a proton uh, positive ion signal that then converts into a sympathetic nervous system signal as um, yin chi or negative ion and that's what then is conducted through the water as the electron signal and it originates from this coherent um, laser biophoton signal as a spiritual energy and so that's why the muscle training can also be a spiritual training and but for example uh, Qigong master Yan Shin in his book that I linked he talks about how there was this famous muscle builder in China and he could do you know so many reps and so many sets and whatever and so then Yan Chin, he just kept sending more chi energy into the guy. And the guy was like instantly, instantly doubling and tripling his reps and sets and the amount of weight, the volume of weight. And so the, so the irony is, is that the Qigong masters, they don't have any muscle. They, I mean, they have some muscle, but it's, it's mainly just what they've done is they've stretched their tendons so much. So they're dealing when you, the tendons, like the, just like how the tendons activate the testosterone receptors, then the, the tendons are mainly the collagen in the body. So the collagen is the, the tendons and the, um, I don't know what, what it's also ligaments. So that's why in Qigong, you're mainly, you're mainly dealing with the collagen because the collagen directly then um, is the same has is mainly microtubules and the microtubules are also what the neurons are you know made up of composed of the of microtubules and tubulin so then that's what activates the splitting of the water and then so then when you split the water in the muscle, then you're um, triggering this cascade of energy that then activates the glycogen. I'm not, I'm not, at this point, I'm just sort of like hy hypothesizing. <laughs> um, okay, that's all. I'm going to, sorry for just rambling, but that's, um, that's, uh, there, there's a very fascinating relation, you know, between, because in alchemy, what you're doing is you're combining the yin and the yang together. And so in, in, in essence, you're combining the protons and the electrons, and then you're reversing it back into the photon signal. So you're reversing that whole process. Um, and I will leave it at that. Thanks.